Good morning, first graders. It's me, Mr. Christian. Happy Wednesday. I'm back to read you another short story. In today's short story, we'll be reading Frog and Friends, Party at the Pond. Now, the author of this book is Eve Bunting, and the illustrator of this book is Josie Moss. So hopefully you have a comfortable place to sit. You have both ears open so you can practice those listening skills. And I hope you enjoy this book. Let's get started. Frog's Party. Frog liked fall. He liked it when the leaves from the trees fell into his pond. They were like little boats that sailed across the water. He played boat races with his friends and also with himself. Sometimes a big leaf would drop and Frog would make a leaf hat. But the best part of fall was his fall party. It's a really cool hat. Each year, he asked his friends raccoon, rabbit, squirrel, possum, and her babies to come. There was food to eat, and there were games to play, and each one did a party trick. This year, he also asked Chameleon. Why? Rabbit asked when he told her. Chameleon lives by himself. I think he is lonely, Frog said. Please do not ask him, Raccoon said. We like the party the way it is, with just us. I don't want to be rude, Frog said, but it is my party, and I'm going to ask him. I wonder why they don't want Chameleon to join their party. What do you think, first graders? Is there something that Chameleon did to the other friends in the story? I don't know. Hopefully, as we read, we'll find out. On party day, Frog dusted and cleaned. He gathered nuts and berries and some flies as a treat for Chameleon. And for himself, he made a leaf hat for each of his friends. The party was fun. They all looked spiffy in their leaf hats. Even Chameleon wore one. But he was very quiet. He did not join the games, join in the games. He is new and he is shy. That is all, Frog said. Aww. When it was time for party tricks, Raccoon did her act. Possum did her swinging by her tail trick. Her babies held on tight. A squirrel did his jump from tree to tree trick. Rabbit did her hop, skip, and wiggle trick. Frog did his dive with somersault trick. Your turn, Chameleon, Raccoon called. Chameleon did not look happy. He ran and hid in a pile of leaves. You do not have to do a trick, Frog said kindly. He blinked. Oh, my Chameleon. You have turned yellow. Chameleon ended up turning the same color as the leaves that he grabbed. He camouflaged in those leaves. Chameleon ran to another pile of leaves. He turned red. Everyone clapped. That is such a good trick, Rabbit said. How did you do it? Squirrel asked. I don't know. I just did. For the first time, Chameleon smiled. The party was wonderful. Everyone helped with the cleanup. Even Chameleon. Each time he changed color, they stopped to clap. I'm happy to see that Chameleon now is happy and he's enjoying the party along with everybody else. It is no big thing. I can do it because I'm a chameleon, Chameleon said. I cannot do the tricks you do. We are glad you came, Rabbit said. 
Even if you could not do that special trick, we like you. You are nice. Chameleon smiled, his biggest smile of all. I like you too. Raccoon nodded. I always say that it is good to make new friends. You did not say that, Rabbit told her. I say it now, Raccoon said. Shall we ask Little Jumping Mouse to our party next fall? Frog asked. Yes, they all shouted. And then they lay on their bellies around the pond. They made leaf boats from their hats and played boat races till it was time to go home. I'll look at the uh, possum's babies. That looks fun. Frog dance. Frog was not a very good dancer. He liked to dance at night when there was no one to see. He danced when he was happy. Tra la 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 la. He danced when he was sad. Dancing made him happy again. He danced when it was wet and rain dripped from the trees. Spitter, spatter, splash. Lovely. Frog danced to the moon and the stars and his shadow danced with him all the way to sunrise. One night, he saw a rabbit watching him. Oh no, Frog was embarrassed. He hopped into his pond and dived deep. Rabbit came to the edge of the still dark water. Frog, Frog, come and dance. When I am sad, I watch you dance. Your dancing makes me happy again. Garoop, garoop, Frog said diving deeper. So this whole time Rabbit was watching Frog dance. Frog, Frog, come and dance, Raccoon called. When I am happy, I watch you dance. Your dancing makes me even happier. Tra la 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 la. When it is raining, I come and watch you dance, Squirrel said. Spitter, spatter, splash, lovely. And when you dance to the moon and the stars, my babies and I stay up all the way to sunrise, Possum said. Just watching you is a celebration. Oh, I really like how Frog's friends are saying really nice things about Frog and his dancing ability. Frog peered over a lily pad, but I am not a very good dancer. No matter, your dancing is filled with joy, so, it's fill so it fills us with joy. Really? Frog came out of the pond. Maybe you should dance too. Doing is always better than watching. Come dance with me, everyone. We are not very good dancers, everyone said. No matter, Frog told them. They danced to the moon and the stars all the way to sunrise. And the night around them danced too. No kisses for Frog. Frog did not know what happened. He was asleep on his rock, then he was not. He was hanging in a net. Oh no, a voice said, got you. Frog tried to jump out, but a hand blocked the top of the net. Oh no. I wonder what's gonna happen to Frog, it looks like. What do you think first graders, you think it was another animal that grabbed the net? Cause I do see a hand up here. What who could it be? What do you think? Two eyes stared in at him. Frog stared back. In case you don't know, I'm a girl, the voice said. Let me out. Frog jumped again and hit his head. Ouch. Sorry, the girl said. 
I am going to hold you, and then I'm going to kiss you. What? Frog was shocked. When I kiss you, you will turn into a prince, the girl said, and you will marry me, and I will be a princess. What? Frog was shocked again. Hold still, the girl lifted Frog. She held him close to her face. They were eyeball to eyeball. I am sorry, you are so ugly, the girl said. Frog sniffed. I am sorry, you are so rude. Wow. Those are some hurtful words happening between the girl and the frog. The girl made a O with her lips. Her face came closer. She closed her eyes. Wait, Frog croaked in his bossiest voice. I don't want to be a prince. I like being a frog. If you make me a prince, I will not marry you. She opened her eyes. Why not? She asked. You would not be happy with me. I shed my skin a few times each year. It is not a pretty sight. Do you want me to show you? The girl shuddered. No, thank you. I like to sleep underwater. Cold, cold water. Brr, the girl said. I like to have flies and moths for dinner. I catch them on my sticky tongue. See? Oh, look, he ends up taking, sticking his tongue out to the girl. Oh, I see some stuff on his tongue. Hopefully you can see that as well. Maybe he has some leftover flies and moths that he had the night before. Frog flipped out his tongue. A squashed fly, four bumblebee legs, and, and a half mosquito were still stuck on it since lunch. Oh, he had it for lunch. Oh, yuck and double yuck. By the way, your hands are too warm. I am quite uncomfortable, the frog said. I am sorry. The girl opened her hands a little. You will not do those things when you are a prince. I will. You can change me outside, but I will always be a frog at heart. What things do girls do? We jump rope. We play soccer. We climb trees. I do not think princesses jump rope or play soccer or climb trees. A princess has to wear a crown and so, and sit at long dinners. Long, long, long dinners. You will still be a girl at heart, and you will not be happy. You are wise, the girl said. Being a princess sounds boring. I think I will stay a girl. Frog smiled. And I will stay a frog. Will you please let me go? Yes, the girl said. But first, I will kiss you because we are friends. Oh, no. That might be dangerous. We could shake hands. Good. They shook hands. She set Frog down and he quickly hopped into his pond. Come back and see me again, he called. But no kisses. He finished off the squashed fly, the four bumblebee legs, and the half mosquito that were left over from lunch. They were delicious. Then he took a nap. It was so good to be a frog. The end. Awesome. That was a great story. I hope you enjoyed that story as well. First grade scholars. Uh, we're going to probably read other Frog and Friends book. As you can see here, there's a lot of different stories with Frog and Friends. So if you enjoyed this book, definitely leave a comment on Google Classroom. Or you can tell uh, Miss Harmon and Ms. Cho that you liked this this book so we can read other frog and friends books all right i hope you enjoy the rest of your day first graders i'll see you tomorrow with tomorrow's story